What if the most important EV breakthrough isn't coming from Silicon Valley, but from silence? 10 minutes, that's all it takes. Not to charge a phone, to erase range anxiety, to drive 600 plus miles, to own an EV that could last four decades. Sounds impossible, which is exactly why it's terrifying. While the world mocked delays and called it caution, Toyota was doing something else entirely. Waiting. Waiting for the battery that doesn't just improve the electric car, but breaks the timeline of the entire industry. No liquid, no compromise, no second chances. Solid state. A hard reboot of physics, manufacturing, and power itself. If it works, gas cars don't fade. They vanish. If it fails, one of the largest automakers on Earth gambles away decades of trust. This isn't an upgrade. It's a deadline. A 10-minute stop that could redraw the future around 2028. So the real question isn't can they build it, it's what happens to everything else if they do. Welcome to Dravexa. If moments like this make you pause and think, wait, what? Like the video, subscribe to the channel, because the next industrial revolution doesn't arrive quietly, and neither do we. Now, picture the scene Toyota once burned into your mind. It's 2028. You roll into a charging station built for a different era of driving. Maybe it's parked near Toyota's experimental city, Woven City, a place designed to test the future before the future arrives. You plug in. You walk inside. And by the time you turn back around, your car isn't good enough. It's ready for a real journey. Toyota's message is blunt. 10 minutes of charging, more than 600 miles of range, no spreadsheets, no route anxiety, no mental gymnastics, just drive. That matters because deep down, range anxiety was never just about distance, it was about time. You can tolerate a stop, what you hate is waiting. Today's EVs can road trip, sure, but only if you accept longer breaks and careful planning. Toyota wants charging to feel boring, predictable, invisible, like fueling always did. And then there's the battery itself. You might expect faster charging to mean faster degradation, more stress, shorter life. Toyota is arguing the opposite. Its executives talk about batteries that last decades, not just past a warranty, but past ownership cycles. Packs designed to outlive the car around them. That's not just engineering talk, that's brand repair. Because somewhere along the way, Toyota became the hybrid company. And for some, that sounded like hesitation. This is Toyota trying to rewrite that story. Not hesitant, strategic. Not late, timed. So what's really different here? Solid versus liquid, that's the swap. Solid state sounds like a buzzword, but the idea is almost absurdly simple. In today's lithium-ion batteries, lithium ions move through a liquid electrolyte. It works, but it carries baggage. That liquid can burn, it degrades over time, and it limits how tightly energy can be packed. Solid state flips that highway from liquid to solid. Toyota has focused on sulfide-based solid electrolytes materials that are softer and more adhesive than fragile ceramics. That matters because batteries aren't built in theory, they're built on factory floors. If that solid layer does its job, it becomes both conductor and separator, and suddenly something radical is possible, a lithium metal anode. That's the holy grail. That's where energy density explodes. More range without more weight, Faster ion movement means faster charging. On paper, it's a clean sweep. But batteries don't live on paper. They live through potholes and heat waves, through winter mornings and summer fast charges, through years of vibration, expansion, and stress. This is where solid state has always stumbled. Cracks form. Interfaces degrade. Dendrites grow like microscopic saboteurs. That's why this moment feels different. Toyota isn't doing this alone, and that tells you something. The Japanese government is backing the move through its Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry, officially certifying Toyota's next-generation battery development under economic security policy. Translation, Japan wants control over its battery future, and it's willing to fund it. This isn't a lab experiment anymore. 
This is about factories, supply chains, national strategy, and at the center of it all stands Toyota Motor Corporation, betting that one 10-minute stop can change how you think about electric cars forever. If this promise holds, the EV era doesn't creep forward, it jumps. Now zoom in, because this is where Toyota stops talking dreams and starts locking doors. Two partnerships sit at the absolute center of this solid-state gamble, and if you miss them, you miss the strategy. First up, Sumitomo Metal Mining. This is deep core battery science. Sumitomo is working with Toyota on cathode materials engineered to survive punishment, cycle after cycle, charge after charge, without slowly tearing themselves apart. Degradation is the silent killer of batteries, and this is Toyota going straight for the jugular. Sumitomo has already said it's aiming for mass production around Japan's fiscal year 2028. And here's the tell. Toyota is the priority customer. Not someday, not maybe, first in line. Then there's the second partnership, just as critical but even harder to pull off at scale, Idemitsu Kosan. This is the supply chain partner, the one turning lab chemistry into something you can actually manufacture by the millions. Idemitsu is working with Toyota to develop mass production methods for solid electrolytes. They've even announced plans to scale up lithium sulfide production, a key ingredient for sulfide-based solid electrolytes. That's not a press release move, that's an industrial commitment. Put these together and the plan becomes obvious. Toyota isn't waiting until launch day to solve shortages. It's securing the hardest materials now, before the spotlight turns on. And there's a bigger layer beneath it all. This is national strategy. For years, China and South Korea have dominated battery manufacturing. Japan wants back in, and Toyota Motor Corporation is the spear tip. Now let's talk numbers, the ones that make people lean back and squint. Toyota has floated ranges around 1,000 kilometers, about 621 miles, and charging from 10 to 80 percent in roughly 10 minutes. Some of the language even hints that later versions could go farther as the chemistry matures. Compared to today's mainstream EVs, most living between 250 and 350 miles, that's not an improvement, that's a category shift. Is it physically possible? Yes, and here's why. Higher energy density means you squeeze more energy into the same volume. If you can safely use a lithium metal anode, and that's the big if, you dramatically raise how much energy each kilogram can store. Suddenly, you're not hauling extra weight just to go farther. Fast charging becomes realistic if internal resistance stays low and the cell can manage heat without breaking down. That's the hidden enemy. Heat kills batteries long before time does. And then there's the claim that sounds almost reckless, a battery lifespan measured in decades. Toyota executives have suggested lifetimes several times longer than conventional packs. Here's the secret most people miss. Long life isn't just chemistry, it's geometry, it's interfaces. Inside a battery, layers expand and contract thousands of times. If those surfaces stay smooth, evenly stressed, and well-bonded, the battery lives. If they don't, it dies early. Safety is the quieter headline, but it might be the most important one. Liquid electrolytes burn. Solid electrolytes are far more thermally stable. Combine that with durability and suddenly you reduce fire risk, widen the temperature window, and shrink the need for heavy thermal management systems. That's how you get a lighter car with more range. So why isn't everyone already doing this? Because solid-state batteries have enemies, small ones, brutal ones. The first is cracking. Many solid electrolytes behave like glass. Vibrations, pressure, repeated swelling, they fracture. And a microscopic crack isn't cosmetic, it's a failure path, one that grows every cycle. The second enemy is dendrites. 
During charging, lithium can grow needle-like structures that push forward, cell by cell. If one reaches the other side, you get a short circuit, sudden failure, heat, in the worst cases, fire. Solid electrolytes were supposed to stop dendrites cold, but reality is messier. Stress, imperfect contact, uneven pressure, those gaps give dendrites a way in. Toyota and Itamitsu claim their breakthrough is a solid electrolyte that's flexible, adhesive, and resistant to cracking. That might sound like marketing, but what it really signals is this. They're not chasing perfection, they're chasing survivability. And that's the difference between a demo and a revolution. If you want to stay ahead of the breakthroughs that decide which cars you'll trust tomorrow, make sure you like and subscribe to Dravexa, because the final pieces of this puzzle are even more dangerous than they sound. Here's the brutal truth you don't hear in press conferences. The electrolyte doesn't just need to work, it needs to cling. Cycle after cycle, expansion, contraction, no gaps, no peeling away. Because the moment contact breaks, performance falls off a cliff. And even if you solve that, you still haven't solved the real monster, manufacturing. High yield, low cost, perfect consistency at obscene scale. A battery that behaves in a lab pouch cell is a science project. A battery you can stamp out by the millions, safely, cheaply, identically, that's industry. That's war. And this is why every deadline slip matters. Not because Toyota failed to make something impressive once, but because the hardest part is making it again and again and again. That's the lens you need as we zoom out to the roadmap. Toyota's solid-state plan doesn't exist in isolation. It sits on top of a broader battery strategy, one that quietly reveals how cautious and calculated this whole play really is. Before the full solid-state leap, Toyota has laid out a sequence of next-generation packs, cost-focused lithium-iron phosphate options, higher-performance lithium-ion chemistries, incremental steps designed to cut cost, boost range, and, most importantly, teach factories how to scale EVs profitably in the mid to late 2020s. The logic is simple. Learn while you earn, build supply chains, harden production lines, grow EV volume while solid state matures in the background. But Toyota isn't alone on the track anymore. Mercedes-Benz has already shown real-world testing with solid-state prototypes, talking openly about long-distance runs. Nissan claims it has a pilot line and is targeting the late 2020s. Honda is pushing its own path, quietly but seriously. And then there's China. Automakers and battery firms there speak aggressively about solid and semi-solid state cells, treating them less like a moonshot and more like a timing problem. Giants like CATL and BYD point to the same window, mass production closer to 2030, which brings us to the credibility problem. Toyota has talked about solid state batteries for years. Early targets came and went. Each new promise sounded better than the last, and each delay taught the audience the same reflex, I'll believe it when I see it. So will this time be different? Here's the fairest answer. Toyota has more pieces on the board now than ever before. Government certification, material partners like Sumitomo Metal Mining, a real solid electrolyte supply chain with Itamitsu Kosan. This looks less like optimism and more like industrial buildup but the finish line is still merciless. If Toyota arrives in 2027 to 2028, it could steal the spotlight, rewrite expectations, maybe even reset trust. If it arrives in 2030, the technology may still be huge, but it won't be alone. And in this market, being first isn't everything, but being late costs loyalty. So here's the real takeaway. Solid-state batteries aren't magic. Toyota's history gives skeptics plenty of ammunition. But for the first time, the puzzle pieces are actually snapping together. If Toyota hits its window, 
you could see EVs that charge in minutes, drive farther, worry less about fires, and age more gracefully than anything on the road today. If it misses, rivals will happily take the crown. Either way, the next few years decide everything. Watch pilot lines, watch early production cars, watch real-world testing, not glossy slides. And if you want to stay sharp as this race unfolds, make sure you like and subscribe to Dravexa, because the future of driving isn't announced, it's proven.